PFL 8 goes down on August 19th from the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Hollywood, Florida. The event is headlined by the women's lightweight playoff semifinals as a two-time Olympic judo gold medalist Kayla Harrison takes on the city kickboxing product Jenna Fabian. And we've got you covered with uh, predictions for all the fights along with free picks and bets bets. Let's get right into it. First fight of the night. Christian Lawson taking on Jonas Flock. Uh, Lawson comes in as the plus 110 underdog. He's 8-2, 26 years old, fighting out of Dark Wolf MMA in Florida. Flock, uh, minus 120 favorite. He's 14-5, fighting out of Shabogan, Wisconsin with Pure Vita MMA. He's giving up a significant size advantage in this fight. He's 5'8". Uh, Lotion coming in at 6'2", uh, seven, 77 and a half inch reach. So is the much bigger fighter here. He should be able to force Flock to have to engage in the clinch because if these guys go toe-to-toe, uh, Lotion will have... He's going to have a striking advantage. And with that height and reach advantage... Unless he wants to take some risks, uh, really, as long as he uses his range well with his size, he should be able to dictate the pace of this fight, uh, at least on the feet. And then uh, Lawson also has decent grappling. He's got good judo trips and a good uh, top control game as well. So uh, I think he has advantage in grappling, uh, especially on the ground, because he's so much bigger than Flock. That's a huge factor when it comes to, uh, to takedowns and grapplings in this in, in this matchup. I think Lawson in this fight as the plus money dog, I think the wrong fighter is outright favored here. Uh, I think he takes this one by decision. I like fight goes to distance, yes. At like minus 134, I see it. And then I, I, I also like uh, the outright Christian Lawson on the money line spot. So yeah, let's move on. Next fight, Miranda Barber against Amanda Leave. Not much to say about either of these two. Uh, Barber is one and one. As a professional MMA fighter, she went one and two in pro boxing, had a decent career as an amateur MMA fighter as well. She's taken on Amanda Leave, who's making her pro debut as an MMA fighter. She went two and oh as an amateur, but she hasn't stepped in an MMA cage in over two years. Uh, Leave has a pretty big size advantage in this fight. Barber, more of a true 145er, whereas Leave, with her BJJ background, Solid 155-pound fighter. Uh, Barber for sure is going to have the striking advantage in this fight, but with Leave's size and with her high-level jiu-jitsu, uh, if, this, if this fight gets to the mat, it's probably going to be over pretty quickly. I was going to bet Leave in a parlay here at minus 210, and then it moved all the way to minus 300. Uh, but honestly, I'm trying to be disciplined right now. Uh, you know, we were at high watermark over the past two years of like 30 units, and we've just completely nosedived so i've i've completely nosedived so i'm trying to be more disciplined right now and betting on debuting fighters uh is never a good idea so uh i was also going to take a piece of the over the over at plus 125 uh, you know I, the market expects this fight to end inside the distance and usually i'm all over those but uh i was going to try to come in on the other side and try to be uh the contrarian and get plus money on a, a women's fight uh, and uh, yeah, honestly, there's way too much volatility in this fight and not the volatility that I like to bet on, which I've talked about before. Uh, and I'll talk about it later on in this fight with these heavyweights. Uh, with the with this style clash, I just got to pass. It's frustrating, but I'm going to stay off of it. My pick is leave by decision, but I'm not betting this fight. Okay, <clears throat> let's talk about another greasy fight on this card. Carl Sumanatafa taking on Mohamed Darice. And yeah, with all due respect, um, this is about as low level as it gets for pro MMA. Uh, Carl Sumanatafa comes in as riding a four fight losing streak against Mo Darice, riding a three fight losing streak himself. Sumanatafa, 12 and 13 as a pro, 31 years old, 6 foot 5, 81 inch reach. Uh, Darice, 8 and 4. 33 years old he's going to be giving up five inches of reach against simona tafa here uh so you look at this 
Simona Tafa, like I said, four straight losses, but all four by decision. And some of those fights against decent competition. He went the distance with Ali Isayev and uh, against Hrenin for Uh So when it comes to his chin, he's not the type of guy that's just going to get turned off on one punch. Uh, the same cannot be said against Mo Derice, uh, whose last three losses have all come by way of knockout. So, I mean, it's a greasy side to back, but I think you got to go with the Samoan here. And uh, this fight straight down the middle, It depending on where you look. It looks like there was some betting action on Sumana Tafa on the European International Offshore books, like Five Dimes, Unibet, William Hill, Bet365. I'll have him lined at around minus 130, whereas Darice was the short favorite on the legalized American books like BetMGM, DraftKings, PointsBet, etc., now it looks like things have kind of evened out Simona Tafa as the consensus favorite across the board, except for a Unibet, which uh, still has him at minus 105 as an underdog. So very interesting to me. It's a close fight. I really can't call it, but I think that there was betting value uh, on Simona Tafa at that price. Depending on where the money was, uh, there's there's value on both sides. I got Simona Tafa at plus 110, but if Darice ends up at like plus 110 himself, you can take a shot on him on both sides and uh call it a day at plus 110 on both sides and uh you know you're walking away with money in your pocket no matter what uh so yeah honestly my my goal here was to bet the fighter that was going to close on the <clears throat> the money line as the plus money side and i was trying to avoid um this type of thing where honestly if this fight closes minus 115 minus 105 don't even bet it don't give the bookies the satisfaction. You should be getting plus money on one fighter in this fight, guys. Um, it's that simple. FanDuel, we see you out there with your minus 116, minus 102 line. Cut that shit out. Give us even money. Even Unibet, same same thing. Minus 120, minus 106. Like, that's garbage stuff. That That's probably going to be the one of the least wagered on fights of the weekend. You could spare some profits there. Give us some freaking even money, all right? So, uh, anyways, that that just pisses me off. But, anyways, as far as the pick goes, I like Simon Atafa. Uh, I, I wanted him at plus money. I got him at plus one, 110. And uh, if it gets shaded too far the other way, I see him at minus 130 some places. If he gets – if uh, Doris gets to that, like, plus 110, plus with 15 range, you can't go wrong. This is a total coin flip fight. So, um yeah, it's a total wait and see type spot. Let the market dictate where you're going to put your money because this is a coin flip fight. And uh, like many other fights on this card as well, uh, I'll be shocked if this one goes the distance. So it's a good parlay piece. Fight goes the distance. No, even at minus 400, honestly. Um, yeah, there's a lot of fights on this card that are not going to go the distance. And I feel like this is one of them. Okay, next fight. This is one of the fights that got changed. So... Um, uh, what happened was Larissa Pacheco missed weight, so she's out uh, of the PFL semifinals. And uh, Mariana Marias it moves up to the semifinals, and she was supposed to fight Claudia Zamora. And Mariana uh, Maknakina was supposed to fight um, Caitlin Young, who's now out. So they made this match basically one uh, with one day's notice. Claudia Zamora taking on Marina Maknakina. Maknakina five and two as a pro, thirty three years old. Claudia Zamora three and one as a pro, thirty five years old. Uh, Maknakina eight time world sambo champion. Started her MMA career in twenty sixteen. She went four and zero before losing to Liana Jojua by decision, and then she moved to Bellator. She picked up uh, another decision loss. To Janae Harding, and then she defeated Amanda Bell back in June of this year. Uh, moved from Bellator over to the PFL. Maktakina is a girl who competed at bantamweight, then featherweight. And in her most recent fight, obviously for Bellator, she was a featherweight. But I'm kind of conflicted here. I was coming into this knowing that Maktakina was, uh, you know, I was kind of a fan of hers. So in, in Bellator, I thought she was a good fit there. I thought they would build her up properly. Coming this one of these transfer. Uh, transition fighters coming from a different discipline but again she's kind of in the wrong weight class here uh, she was definitely uh, undersized against Caitlin Young who's a big girl right at 155 
now against Claudia Zamora on short notice. Uh, not the only thing that's coming in short here is Claudia Zamora is five feet tall at lightweight at 155 pounds, which is just whew, that's uh, kind of ridiculous size wise. And you know she also fought four of her fights in her career. Uh, some fights in her four career at bantamweight so these are two girls probably natural bantamweights fighting all the way up at 155 pounds and i don't even think samara came in at 155 i think she came in likely closer to 152 now i didn't like mark nakina against caitlin young who is with uh you know she has decent kickboxing so i was kind of worried about that just because of the size and now she's taking on claudia zamora who's a bit of a brawler, kind of a similar style to Mariana Marias. And I think that's kind of why the matchmakers had them lined up here um, before before all these things changed. So now I don't even know what we have. We have a Sambo fighter in Mak Nakina uh, against a 35-year-old non-specialist MMA fighter uh, who's coming up two weight classes in uh claudia zamoro so i don't know this is just a bad spot as much as i want to back a fighter that i'm a fan of in mock nakina again i'm just trying to be more disciplined in these lower level promotions at least with the pfl so i'm gonna have to pass altogether on this fight from a betting perspective as far as um a prediction goes i think mari uh i think Mak Nakina probably gets a submission win here but i have very little confidence to back that prediction but I think it's most likely the path to victory here in this one. I'm not touching this one, though. Uh, I see Mach Nakina line is like minus 131. Sorry, minus 325. So, yeah, that's just ridiculous. I'm not touching it. So, yeah, <clears throat> moving on. Henan Freyer comes in as the minus 235 betting favorite over Stuart Austin. Stuart Austin, 15 and 6, 33 years old giving up five inches of height and eight inches of reach to Fahea, who is just an absolute monster. 31 years old, 7-2 record, fighting out of Rio de Janeiro, Team Nagara. Uh, honestly, this fight is pretty cut and dry. If Austin wasn't giving up such a huge height and reach disadvantage to Fahea, um, I would probably be on him here because he's just a scrappy fighter and he's a bit underrated. But that puncher's chance that I like to bet into volatility-wise uh, with heavyweights, it gets nullified by a guy who has six inches of reach. He's six inches taller and seven inches uh, has a seven-inch reach advantage. So that puncher's chance just gets completely nullified, especially at heavyweight. You know, I'm always trying to s sniff out those dog spots, but honestly, I don't see especially at heavyweight, I don't see Austin having a, a much of a chance here, um, if any, in this fight. Because honestly, against a guy like Fahea, who has never been knocked out, uh, which is probably Austin's only real chance of victory here, as much as I want to fade, kind of a, no disrespect to Fahea, but a lower tier heavyweight at minus 275, it's that size that I just don't want to get in the way of. So I'm steering clear on this side uh, of the of the betting side on this one, I don't have a pick. I think Fahea probably gets the job done, but I'm not going to bet it either way. And then another one, Fight Goes to Distance, no. Solid parlay piece, and uh, I wouldn't really mind the under as well. All right, so now we're moving on to the playoffs. We'll get to the first of the two women's lightweight semifinals. This one basically was created today because, again, like I said, Larissa Pacheco missed weight, so now Mariana Marias moves up uh, against Taylor Guardardo, who uh, found her spot, found herself in a in a decent spot here. You know, fighting a little bit lesser of opponent, uh, but I got to tell you, Marias is just an outright scrapper, dirty boxer. Lots of work out of the clinch. She tends to rush in a little bit, leads with her chin a little bit. Uh, so this is an interesting matchup because I think based on what we saw from Gordado in her first two fights in the PFL, this is something that might give her problems. And it's similar to, very similar to the problems that she would have had against Pacheco. If Gordado is going to try to come out here and fight toe-to-toe -to -toe, uh, against Mariana Marias, uh, who's just a ferocious, aggressive fighter, she's going to be in some trouble, honestly. After seeing 
that they changed the fight arounds, the the fights around. Um, I surely expected Marais to come in as the betting favorite, and then boom, uh, you know, Bet Online comes out with with a swift opener, and Marais comes out as the minus one one ten underdog. Uh, Guardado my, line at minus one twenty. So I didn't want anything to do with this fight to begin with when it was first announced. I was like, oh, I'm just going to not play it. But as soon as this is announced, you know, now you're forcing my hand. I got Marias here. I think she should be like a, a I, I think she should be a significantly larger favorite. Uh, I think she gets a job done with the second or third round TKO. Uh, I think that honestly, Mariana Marias is just a little bit kind of a less hard hitting version of uh, Larissa Pacheco. And it's interesting. Pacheco has a loss to Jessica Andrade, who trains with Mariana Marias. So we got some MMA irony going on here with this last minute replacement matchup. Kind of gives a little bit of a twist to this tournament as far as Pacheco coming out as the clear number two coming into this uh, semifinal. It was kind of a foregone conclusion that she would advance and go on to this trilogy bout against Kayla Harrison, and that's not the case anymore. So we're going to have a new challenger for the PFL Women's Lightweight Championship. And uh, yeah, I think uh, Marias gets it done against, you know, we, we know this story against uh, uh, Taylor Gordado. She's just she's just very inexperienced. She had a decent career as an amateur, 8-1. and one. Her only loss as an amateur is against Ronda Rousey. The only problem is, is that was like 10 years ago, more than 10 years ago. She took a very long layoff, came back into Invitka, uh, had success there, lost her debut fight coming back, and then went 2-0 and in the PFL to get her to this spot. But honestly, I think that, like I said, Mariana Marias little bit i i favored pacheco significantly obviously the line makers did too but now coming in against marias i think the the odds makers are making a mistake here i think this fight is way way wider than what the odds are indicating here and i think marias gets the the job done all right moving on to the first of two heavyweights Dennis Goltsov against Ante Delia. Uh, Goltsov comes in as the minus two thirty betting favorite against Delia. Goltsov twenty seven and six as a pro. He's won twenty two of his last twenty four fights. He's five and one since coming into the PFL back in twenty nineteen. Four of those five wins coming by way of stoppage. Although the over is cashed in four of his six. PFL appearances and turned a profit of about a unit and a half in that stretch. And then Ante Delia, 18 and 4 as a pro, uh, won three of his last four between PFL and KSW. Uh, he's two of those wins coming by stoppage, one by decision. And then his most recent loss coming by way of knockout against that PFL number one heavyweight seed, Bruno Capaloza, who we'll talk about very shortly. Uh, who just got absolutely demolished, just turned to dust against um, Bruno Capaloza in that fight, uh, starched him in about 40 seconds. Uh, so, yeah, the under is cashed in three of Delia's last four for an ROI of about 20% in that stretch. So he's got, it's an interesting fight here because we have a guy who uh, still has finishes but has gone over more more than under, and then a guy who still has finishes but has gone under more than over. And I think if you're backing uh, Goltsov here in this spot, your best bet is to just steer clear of those method props and parlay up your Russian at the best odds you can find because, well, Goltsov has a number of numerous stoppages to his name as of late. He's gone over the betting total in four of his last six Uh getting wins in those second and third rounds. So apart from that, he's also facing an incredible, incredibly durable opponent in Ante Delia. So he's been stopped. Uh, he hasn't been stopped by strikes in his last 14 fights. He does have some submission losses there, but this is a guy who is just incredibly tough. Um, so, yeah, I feel like there's a good chance that Koltsov just beats the crap out of him for 15 minutes. And if you're backing him inside the distance, you might be shaking your head the whole fight because this guy is like he's kind of like the Croatian version of Hua, Shogun Hua. He's the same type of build, kind of same type of mentality. If you're backing the Croatian in this fight, I think your best bet is probably on the money line at plus 245. Uh, you know, again, don't don't pick your poison with the method of victory. I think 
but there's a lot of a lot of uncertainty in the in here. Uh, there's one thing that's certain. I'll talk about in a second, but. As far as the betting total goes, over under one and a half rounds, I think it's a gamble either way, to be honest. Based on the current betting line, minus 150 over one and a half rounds, you risk the chance of Goltsov putting Delia away early, similar to how Kapalotsa did in their first meeting. However, with the under one and a half rounds, you risk this fight being similar to Goltsov versus Brandon Salis or Ali Asayev, where the fight ended in like the third round. So with that in mind, it's probably best to steer clear of the betting total in this matchup. Stick to the one thing I'm pretty sure of. Fight goes to distance. No, again, very, very affordable price of minus 195 between two hard-hitting heavyweights. Um, again, both are both are very durable guys, and there's a reason why this is only lined at minus 195, where all the other heavyweight fights tonight are tomorrow night lined at minus 400 on this prop at fight goes the distance no i still like it i think you're getting some value here so i think it's a decent parlay piece and uh yeah as far as my pick goes i think Goldsov gets it done in like the third round but i want nothing to do is the side and uh the only part i'll have in this is fight goes the distance no in a parlay <clears throat> all right moving on <clears throat> next heavyweight bout Bruno Capaloza coming in against Jamel Jones. Capaloza minus 200 favorite over Jamel Jones in the second of these two PFL heavyweight semifinals. Capaloza 12 and 5 at 32 years old, 2 and 0 record since coming into the PFL this season. Both wins coming by way of stoppage. His last loss came against the current UFC light heavyweight title contender, Yuri Prochaska, as Prochaska knocked him out early uh, at Ryzen 11 back in July of 2018. Since then, uh, Capeloza is a little bit inactive until his return to MMA in 2021 coming he, he came onto the scene with a huge splash with the first round victory over Anti Delia, cashing as a plus 200 underdog. And then uh, his opponent, Jamel Jones, 12 and 6, just 1 and 0 in the PFL. He got a short notice uh, debut back in June. He cashed as a um, pretty big underdog against Clidson Abreu. With the win, he catapulted himself into the PFL heavyweight playoffs. Now he comes in as a 2 to, two to 1 underdog. Again, against Capaloza with a chance to fight for a million dollars if he gets the win here. So I think if you're backing Capaloza in this fight, the best way to do so, likely on the inside the distance prop, it's a steep minus 150, though. In 17 professional fights, Capaloza has never gone the distance. So if you're backing your guy here, I think inside the distance is a solid look, but very steep. Uh, I would rather just <clears throat> back your guy on a in a parlay and then uh split that under if you can get it and then as for jamel jones i think the best way to back him as i said it before a couple of times in this video just do it on the straight up money line plus 188 jones has managed to reach the distance in four of his 18 professional fights so the notion of him only winning this fight by stoppage is risky if you're going to back your money with it on the inside the distance prop i would advocate not to do that and then as for the betting total if you got Capaloza to win this fight, you should probably be back in the under at minus 155. Capaloza has only reached the second round. Uh, he's The last time that he reached the second round was in 2016. And while Jones holds two decision wins to his name, uh, you have to go back five fights all the way back to 2019 to find a fight where Jones has reached beyond the first round. So with that in mind, I think fight goes to distance. No, even again as a broken record even at that steep price of minus 405 it's a solid parlay piece and uh yeah i think capaloza gets it gets it done i, I kind of like the under and i think fight goes to distance no is a absolute banger of a play for a parlay all right main event let's see how big of a main event this is going to be Kayla Harrison comes in, opened as the minus 1,600 betting favorite over Jenna Fabian 
and she has not been lined at odds of minus 900 or less since making her MMA debut back in 2018. The former judo world champion and two-time Olympian is poised to advance to the PFL finals for a chance to pick up her second straight PFL title and capture uh, her second straight $2 million or $1 million prize to have $2 million in prize money from the PFL. Uh, her opponent, Jenna Fabian, what can you say about her? City kickboxing product. I think she's the cousin of Eugene Behrman, training partner of Israel Adesanya. You can kind of see it in her strikes. Very uh, crafty striker. 4-1 and one in her professional MMA career. She holds a 3-1 record in the PFL. Two of three wins coming by way of stoppage. Kayla Harrison, 10-0 and 0, uh, as a pro. Eight of her 10 wins coming by way of stoppage. She's turned a profit of just 7, 0. 0.74 units on the money line uh, with a 10 and 0 record, meaning she's been a massive favorite every single fight, averaging minus 1350 as a betting line across those 10 professional bouts. Uh, if you're betting Kayla here, if you're betting Kayla Harrison in this fight, there are very few affordable ways to do so. Um, inside the distance lined at minus 600, which could be used in a parlay, but that prop carries a little bit, uh, it, you know, it's <clears throat> it's just, it's risky. There's a chance this can go the distance. A lot of people are saying Jenna Fabian striking might be able to keep Kayla Harrison at bay. So uh, minus, six, minus 600 on an inside the distance prop, kind of a correlated prop parlay too because you're betting a fighter plus fight goes the distance. No, uh, it's very tough. Uh, beyond that, you can pick your poison inside the distance. Um, buy TKO is at even money, and then buy submission is at even money, which is pretty ridiculous considering inside the distance is at minus six, 600. So you got to pick your poison. Either way, I think this fight is priced out one way or the other on Kayla Harrison. Um, to a degree, I think there might be some value on the under one and a half rounds. Um but yeah, we'll get to that. If you're backing uh, Fabian here, your best bet is simple: bet the money line at juicy eighteen to one odds. If you're at Bet Online, on that money line, her only realistic path to victory in this fight is to win over by knockout. Um, the longer this fight goes, the more chance Harrison has of getting her hands on Fabian, getting her to the mat, and submitting her. It's that simple. If Fabian pulls off the upset, she'll probably get it done early. I think uh, because Kayla Harrison's probably going to let this fight be competitive as long as she wants it to be, which means she'll probably let it play outstanding for the first half of the first round. If she feels threatened, then it might turn into an actual fight. But uh, I think she just dictates this fight from beginning to end. Fabian is lined at plus 1,200 to win inside the distance, which is a smaller payout than what you would get to find her if you got her on the money line at some sports books. Which I said plus eighteen hundred at Bet Online. Um, so yeah, with that in mind, if you're backing the Kiwi in this spot, don't be greedy. If you're backing the Kiwi, don't be greedy. Take the money line. Yeah, don't uh, don't get fancy here. As for the betting total, under one and a half rounds, minus one eighty five. Again, I think a decent parlay piece, considering both fighters have gone under the betting total more times than not in their PFL careers. So. Yeah, I think Harrison gets it done, probably first-round submission. But I do think there's some value in Jenna Fabian. But again, if I was up, uh, if we were still rolling, you know, almost up 40 units over the past year and a half, I would be all over Fabian here. But I can't just be giving away units. So I'm going to be conservative. I like Harrison inside the distance. Uh, I think she wins by stoppage. I like Harrison. On, I like the under. And then I also like, uh, I think, I think if you can get Harrison inside the distance at uh, a decent price, minus 600 is kind of steep, but I don't know. There might be some value there to bet that up in a parlay. But yeah, if you want all my best bets for uh, this card, these four playoff matches and then as well the whole card uh hit up patreon.com five canadian dollars so that's like 450 us 435 depending on how 
inflation's going. So yeah, hit that up. And uh, before we go, let's. I'm gonna give my playoff prediction. So if I think, if I think Goltsov is moving on, I think Kapaloza is moving on. That's a banger. That's an absolute banger of a fight. I think. Uh, wow, I, I think the odds are probably minus one ten on both sides there. I'd probably go with Kapaloza just because, just because I think he's got better hitting power, and uh, Goldslav's kind of a guy that likes to take the fight. He likes to let the fight come to him and try to bring the fight as far as he can take it, and that's not going to work against Bruno Kapaloza. So I think. Bruno Capelloza is a solid pick to win the uh, PFL Heavyweight Championship for 2021. Pick up that million dollar prize, and then it's pretty, uh, especially now, especially now, it's pretty, uh, it's a non event. I think Kayla Harrison picks up this, uh, her second PFL Women's Lightweight Championship. Even if Mariana Marias advances, yeah, I thought. It'd be interesting to see Larissa Pacheco in the trilogy, but it's not happening. So we got to move on. I think she moves on too. And who knows? She might be headed to the UFC if she can make 145 pounds. And they could re uh, they could bring that featherweight division back in the UFC and maybe get one more big fight out of Amanda. But who knows? Anyways, again, please like the video, subscribe to the channel before you go and then also hit up combat odds.ca we got so much content this week pfl8 bellator 265 ufc vegas 34 pacquiao versus ugas we'll have picks for all of those follow along on all social media platforms twitter instagram facebook tiktok all of those good things hit that up on uh, combat odds hq across all social media platforms and then again if you want all of my picks for those events that i just said uh patreon.com combat odds hq it's only five five canadian dollars a month so it's a it's a it's a bargain because you get every every pick that i'm placing my free picks plus my best bets and then later tonight or early tomorrow bellator 265 picks coming out ufc two uh ufc vegas 34 picks pacquiao yugas will be coming out later tonight as well and then combat odds post show friday night and saturday night so it just doesn't stop <clears throat> losing my voice again combat odds.ca for all my picks for these events combat odds hq all right talk to you later guys